What's going on guys? I've got another video for y'all today. Uh, the 370 is due for a brake flush, so I need to go ahead and get the brakes flushed out and get the fluid changed. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk y'all through how to do that. Um, first things first is I need to get the car repositioned in the center of the garage because I pretty much have no room to work on that side. And uh, then we need to go ahead and get the uh, lug nuts loosened up so we can take the wheels off later and get the car jacked up. So here we go. Cold start. Shortest half inch extension that I have. I apologize ahead of time for this video if I appear to seem really uh, sweaty today. That's because I am. It's 95. What's the 10 day forecast look like? Yeah. 90, 90, 90. Texas. It's so hot, I don't know if y'all can hear that, the ice cream man is out. Alright, so that's the car jacked up and I've got the hood propped now and the first thing it looks like we need to do is go ahead and remove the brake fluid cover. They even have it labeled here for you. How convenient is that? Alright, and here's what's under that cover. We got the Blake fluid reservoir and the master cylinder just under there. I've also got our clutch fluid reservoir as well. But um, we're just going to be focusing on the brake fluid reservoir. So let's go ahead and get this thing drained out. I'll go ahead and just pad the area around it with uh, paper towels just to make sure I don't spill anything anywhere. cover off that sides and then you're also going to need to take the uh, little filter that sits inside here out I just use both fingers and you should be able to pull it up I'm going to set that aside as well also notice how I've left the uh, cap and the filter uh, upside down here I didn't want to put the filter directly on anything just to kind of prevent any dirt from getting out you want to make sure you keep this clean so uh, don't get it dirty the turkey baster here that I'm going to use to get out most of that oil I've also got this, uh, my old oil container here to be able to store all the brake fluid in. So I've gotten most of that uh, brake fluid out from that reservoir that I can. Uh, I still have a little bit of brake fluid down there in the bottom. You didn't want to take it all out because um, I think you're not supposed to get any air inside the actual master cylinder. Um, all right, but that's most of that taken out with the turkey baster here. And then the next step appears to be we need to go ahead and fill up the brake fluid reservoir back up to the regular level with the um, new fluid. And then we're going to put our automotive bleeder on it. But let me go ahead and get that new fluid now. And just to show you all what I'm using, I'm using Motormedics.3 brake fluid. Uh, my Z takes dot three, but uh, depending on if you have like the sports brakes or if you're driving a different vehicle, your uh, fluid may vary. So just make sure you check the uh, cap to figure out what type of uh, brake fluid to use. All right, so now that we have most of the old fluid out of the reservoir, there's still some that's sort of sitting in the baffles down here, but I don't really have a way to get that out. Um, and I've sucked out most of the oil that's inside the reservoir with the turkey baster. Now I've cleaned this off and it's time to put a little bit of the new fluid into the reservoir just to kind of get it filled up. Um, now to do that, I don't really want to try and pour any of this because I'm trying not to get any of the uh, uh, brake fluid on the paint. So I'm going to use my turkey baster to sort of suck out some of the new fluid. A lot of people make the mistake of just going ahead and reinstalling the filter and then calling that a job, but in order to change the brake fluid, you need to actually flush the brakes, so the job's not finished yet. Um, now in order to do that, you need to use this um, automotive brake bleeder that I've gone ahead and bought. I'll leave a link in the description below kind of showing you where you can pick this up, but um, we need to go ahead and attach this to the uh, brake fluid reservoir so that way we can flush the brakes out properly. Uh, so let's go ahead and get to that. 
Now it's important to make sure that this side of the brakes are free of debris. You don't want any dirt or anything getting inside the system. So make sure that's clean before you install it. Uh, looks like we're good to go here. So now we just need to attach this on top of the fluid reservoir. All right, getting that thing on was a little more difficult than expected. Um, it took me probably five or 10 minutes to finally get this thing on. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, you need to make sure this is on uh, nice and tight and secure because this system needs to be airtight when you start pressurizing it. Uh, so just make sure that that's on securely and you can't like pull it off or anything. Now to make sure that it's on tight, uh, you need to go ahead and pressurize this just to check to see if there's any leaks. Uh, it needs to go up to maybe about 12 PSI or so. I'm just going to start pumping this thing to make sure that uh, I'm clear of any leaks or anything. All right, and that's this thing pressurized up to 12 PSI, as you can see there. So now I'm just going to wait for a few minutes to check to see if I uh, notice any leaks coming out of this. Again, when we start to uh, bleed the brakes, we're going to need to pressurize all this brake fluid to, uh, so that we can force it through the system. Um, so we want to make sure there aren't any leaks or anything so then the fluid can get out. So now we're just going to wait to make sure that I don't have any leaks here and that I've actually put everything on correctly. All right, so it's about 10 minutes later and it looks like the pressure is holding. I mean, I've got a minor leak, but that's sort of to be expected. The air is going to want to leak out a lot quicker. It just means I've got to keep an eye on my pressure whenever I'm pumping the brakes. But um, since it's holding, I'm going to go ahead and release the pressure here just by slowly uh, twisting the cap. Okay. Right, so now that I know that the pressure is holding, I need to go ahead and take this cap off and fill this up with the brake fluid. I'm just going to fill this thing up with both the bottles of brake fluid that I have, being careful not to spill it on any of the paint because this stuff is corrosive to paint. I'm trying to pour it in slowly so I don't get any bubbles or anything in there because I'm trying to avoid having to pump any bubbles into the brakes. That'd be bad. And I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, cap back on. You want to make sure you reattach it really tight. Because again, it's going to need to be able to hold pressure. Okay. All right, now the fluid's in. The next step is to bring the pressure in the container back up to something like 15 PSI. Um, I think you need to maintain above 13 PSI at all times. I'm going to pressurize up to 15 and then just keep an eye on that uh, pressure to make sure that it's uh, not losing pressure or anything. All right, now. I've got it pumped up to 15 PSI. Uh, when you start pumping it, the air that's inside the cylinder is going to want to come out like that. So you're probably going to get these little pockets of air in here. This shouldn't be a problem because I believe this air is just going to accumulate at the top of the reservoir and only the fluid's actually going to go into the cylinder. But I'll just have to keep an eye out for bubbles while I'm bleeding the brakes. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to make sure I keep an eye on the pressure to keep it above 13 PSI or so, um, between 13 and 15. And uh, now it's time to actually bleed the brakes. Let's do it. All right, so now that we got that uh, motive bleeder kind of pressurized and ready to go, it's time to start taking off the wheels. Um, I don't know that there's a necessary order that you need to do this in, um, but I've heard that usually you'll do the wheel that's farthest from the brake reservoir first and then proceed from there. Um, so we'll just go ahead and start off with this back right one. So let's go ahead and get the wheel taken off. So there's the uh, wheel removed now. So I have the base model, uh, so that means I've got the single cylinder caliper on the back. Um, if you've got the sports package, yours might look a little different. Because um, I believe they have different brakes if I remember correctly. I don't know, comment below if I'm wrong. Um, but anyways, uh, here's the uh, bleeder nipple. Um, it has this little rubber cover that goes on top of it. You just need to pull that off. And we need to attach the, uh, uh, the bleeder hose to this. Now. But this bleeder that I'm using, it comes with two lines in case you have two uh, nipples to attach it to. Um, but so since it's pressurized to 15 PSI, I don't know if it's gonna want to kind of eject through this end here. So I've kind of put the cap on it. Um, yeah, I don't know, I'm kind of scared here. I don't know if that's gonna bleed through or not, but um, I've just kind of got it attached to the uh, strut here. Um, Cause it's got like a little metal fitting on the back of it. But yeah, so we need to go ahead and fit this uh, loose end onto the nipple there. Yeah, 
And you want to make sure that that's on really tight so nothing bleeds through. Um, and then, yeah, I've got that other end capped now. Again, don't have any idea if it's going to want to end up kind of spewing through here or not. Um, also, before you get started, you're going to want to loosen the cap on this to let a little air in. That's pretty important. Okay, um, so the next thing that we need to do is we're going to need to turn this little screw here that's uh, attaches to the nipple and that'll actually allow the fluid to begin to flow. And again, I'm going to go recheck my pressure to make sure that it's at 15 PSI before I start the bleed. And it looks like on my car, this thing takes the uh, 5 sixteenths. So I'm just going to attach that and start to loosen it. Here we go. Oh. Okay. Looks like it's bleeding through. It's good. Not seeing any leaks. Looks like it's not bleeding through this. I think there might be a valve inside this uh, little Y joint here. But uh, yeah, so I'm just starting to bleed it fairly slowly. Uh, I'm gonna keep bleeding until I uh, stop seeing any bubbles or any of this kind of little specks of dirt coming through. All right, so the fluid's begun to bleed now. Uh, it might be difficult to see here. Uh, the camera doesn't really focus closely, but uh, I've got some little tiny particulates kind of making their way up through there. But uh, you can see the bottle starting to fill now. So uh, I'm gonna let this run for a couple minutes, go back and check my pressure just to make sure that uh, everything's good to go there. Uh, and I'll go ahead and shut the valve off when I stop seeing any uh, little particles kind of coming through. All right, so I think this side is done. I went ahead and already tightened that valve right here to shut it off so that it stops bleeding. In fact, I probably bled a little too much. You can see there, um, I almost uh, filled the entire bottle up. But yeah, when you guys are bleeding this, um, keep an eye on the bottle level, make sure you don't overflow it. Um, you also need to constantly be pressurizing the uh, tank up top just to make sure you're maintaining 15 PSI because when you start to bleed it, that pressure is gonna want to drop. Um, but yeah, so it should be pretty much done now. The fluid's completely clear. Uh, it's changed color from that kind of goldish color that we had over there. Um, I'm not seeing any metal flakes inside of it, so I think the side's done. Um, so I just need to remove uh, this hose now, and I've already got my uh, container ready uh, to catch any of the fluid that might spill out. And uh, once we're done there, uh, we just need to repeat the same process for the other three calipers. I've gone ahead and put that uh, cap back on there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and remove all the old fluid and put it in the container that I have. All right, and then that's one of the calipers finished. So now I just need to repeat the same process for the uh, other three calipers. Let's roll the time lapse. And this is why you need to keep an eye on the brake fluid. Took my eyes away for just a second to put the rear wheels back on and yeah, that happens. So, watch out. So now the last thing I need to do is you need to go ahead and uh, release the pressure from the bleeder. I'm just go ahead and do that slowly here. It's going to sort of suck 
some of that fluid and air back up as the pressure gets released. Okay. And then once that's done, I'm gonna set the reservoir off to the side here. Just need to uh, remove this cap. I'm gonna go ahead and have a paper towel ready to try and catch any of the fluid. Okay. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to check your uh, fluid level to see if you're sitting in the right mark. Um, I'm actually right there at the top, which is probably good because I need to go ahead and pump the brakes now. But yeah, um, take any of the extra clean fluid you have and just fill this reservoir up if you're sitting low. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and uh, pump the brakes just to make sure that the fluid is completely uh, through the system. Um, anytime you're working on your brakes, whether it be changing your calipers or doing the brake fluid like we just did, you need to make sure you pump them before you get going, otherwise it could cause you a bunch of problems. For instance, your brake's not working. So let's go ahead and get the uh, brakes pumped. All right, and here we are inside the car. As I said, anytime you're working on your brakes, whether it be replacing your calipers or doing a fluid change like we just did, you need to make sure you pump them. Uh, so just give it a couple pumps to make sure that uh, the pedal is firm. And then once you're done pumping your brakes, you just need to go back to the uh, brake fluid reservoir and check to make sure that your level is still sitting between the minimum and maximum marks. Uh, but after that, all I need to do now is go ahead and get the car back down and then go for a test drive to make sure that everything checks out. Oi! Oh, almost forgot the brake fluid cover. Sneaky little. All right, and that's that reinstalled. The garage is pretty much picked up, so time to take it for a test drive. All right, guys, it's time to go for a test drive now, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous. Um, you know, I've done brake calipers before, but I've never done the fluid, so I have no idea how this is gonna go, but uh, we're just gonna have to go and see, so uh, hopefully everything works out. Here we go. Everything appears to be working. I would put the uh, sun visor down, but I guess in the way of the camera. Yeah. Okay, guys, here we go. Stoplight. Brakes are working. So yeah, I guess that just about wraps it up. That's my video on changing your brake fluid on the 370Z. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to leave one down in the comments below. Or if you notice I was doing something wrong, also destroy me down in the comments. I'm looking for ways that I can improve because I don't want to be misinforming you guys. Um, I also noticed while I was changing my brakes that uh, my tire tread level is getting really low, at least on the rears. And I'm not sure that I want to go and buy another tire, a set of tires for the back, because I'm kind of wanting to get new wheels. But I don't really have the money for that right now, but uh, might happen in a couple months, I don't know. Um, but what do you guys think? What wheel do you think I should get? I'm kind of looking to stick with the whole black and white theme in the car. Um, uh, and I'm probably looking at going maybe 19s or 20s probably. I'm kind of leaning towards 20s though, uh, just because the tire right here is a lot cheaper on the 20s than on the 19s. Uh, but yeah, what do you guys think? What would be a good wheel and uh, tire setup on the car? Just uh, leave a comment down below. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.